proudly we hail. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This is C.P. McGregor speaking and welcoming you to another broadcast of Proudly We Hail, a program of your War Department. Through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, we present Don Amici as the star of our play titled A Voyage at Midnight, written by Richard Hall with music by Eddie Skrivanek. Slim Donovan ran a charter boat, the Sea Wench, off the little Venezuelan seaport of Bota. The fishing was good and the tourists were plentiful. But Slim had more than that on his mind as he stepped out of the harbor commissioner's office that afternoon and headed down the row of boats to where the Sea Wench was slipped. For suddenly, an explosion shook the waterfront. Whitey! Whitey, we all right? Uh oh! Yeah, Slim. Gee, I just got the pink slip on this babe. I don't want anything to happen. Where's the explosion? Oh, it's down the harbor a ways. A boat? Yeah. Who is she? Well, it looks like Medella's boat. Yeah, sure enough. Well, come on. We ought to give him a hand. No, uh, too late. She's settling already. Gee, I wonder what happened. I don't know. Medella always did run a sloppy boat. I wouldn't trust him with a skiff and a mill pond. Well, one thing is sure. What's that? He'll really be after you now to buy your boat. Well, that's a thought. Maybe now his boat blew up. I got him right where I want him. You said you'd never do business with Medella. Do business? No. But then if he made me a big enough offer for my uh, boat... You wouldn't sell. Uh -uh. You know, I've often wondered how that guy Medella really makes his money. Well, so have lots of others, and it's really so simple. It is? Well, sure. He goes out with his boat and a little net, waits for the grunion to run. That's where he made all his money in grunion. Ah, you're joking. Am I? Well, whatever he did, Medella's going to have to find himself another boat. Come on, Whitey. Saturday night. Let's get into town, huh? <laughs> Hey, Whitey. Yes, Slim. What have they got all the gendarmes out for tonight? They know you're in town. You compliment me. I wonder, though. Cigarette. Say, maybe Marine Cigar. knows. You know, you're the most curious guy I ever worked for. Yeah? That's the way you get answers to things, being curious. Oh, Marie. Marie. Oh, oh hello, Slim. I did not see you come in. How are you, Marie? Oh, I'm fine. It's been a long time, Slim. Such a long time. Well, I, uh, I've been very busy, Marie. Say, uh, tell me, what are, what are the police doing all over town tonight? Oh, shh. You promise not to tell anyone? Oh, well, sure. Well, someone say they found radio transmitter in hills, giving information on all shipping long coast. Oh. They are trying to catch those responsible. Know how to run a radio transmitter, Whitey? Why, sure. I mean, no. I don't know nothing about them. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. Well, Marie, uh, why don't you stay on once in a while? Oh, huh? you... Good-looking Bob. <laughs> That's what you always say, and then you never call. But I keep on hoping. Yeah. <laughs> Cigarette. Well, hello, Cigarette. Slim. Cigarette. Mind if I sit down? No, not at all, Modelo. Whitey? How are you, Mr. Modelo? Say, the long arm of the law is really out tonight, isn't it, Modelo? You heard what happened? No. You? No. They, they're all stirred up about something. But yeah. They get that way easy. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about something else, Slim. Well, shoot. I guess you heard about my little tough luck this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. I saw your boat. It's too bad. What, uh, what happened? Mm, green Hand lights a cigarette in the engine room just after we were gassed up. Oh, you shouldn't have Green Hands aboard, Madonna. Uh, you're telling me. Sure. But I need a boat, Slim. I wondered if I could borrow yours. For when? Tonight. Got a big party going fishing or something? Yeah. Well... How about it? Sorry, Modelo. No can do. I'll pay you any price. Sorry. Why do you want my boat? There are lots of boats in the harbor. I have to have a fast boat, Slim. Well, if you want a fast boat, why don't you proposition the harbor commissioner? His boat is really fast. <laughs> You're joking, of course. <laughs> Slim, I need a boat. If you will not lend me your boat, then why not sell it to me? Oh, it's an idea. Of course, the price will have to be right. We will make the price right. You see, I'm a little bit of a sentimentalist, Modelo. 
I worked awfully hard to pay for that boat. I like to look down from my little shack above the slip there and see her mooring lines. Makes me feel good. Hmm. How much do you want for her? I want $15,000 in cash. It's a deal. Okay. I'll turn the boat over to you in the morning. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I want it tonight. Oh, but the uh, pink slip is supposed to go through the Harbor Commission. They're pretty strict around here. You let me worry about that, hmm? All right, Madonna. Bring the money over to my shack. I'll be there in a half an hour. I'm sorry you sold her, Slim. Why? Well, we had such a nice little business build up. Oh, we can get another boat. No, uh, not like her. Not like the sea wench. Ah, you're too emotional, Whitey. I'd never get a better price for that hull. Maybe it's a stroke of luck. It is, huh? Sure. I was getting a little fed up with the whole charter business anyway. You're getting fed up with business as good as it is? Oh, sure. Too many headaches. The Harbor Commission saying do this, do that. I was arguing with him for an hour this afternoon just before Modelo's boat blew up. You sure got down here in a hurry when you heard the explosion. Well, I got dough tied up in this boat. But I tell you something, mm. this is on the level. When I left the Harbor Commissioner's office this afternoon, I was going to suggest to you that we take a little vacation. A vacation? Yeah. You know, I don't know what's getting into you, Slim, talking about a vacation at the busiest time of the season and then selling your boat to Medella. I give up. Well, anyway, Whitey, it's fun, isn't it? Playing guessing games. What? Forget it. Here's the shack. Looks like we beat Modelo here. We pause briefly from our story, A Voyage at Midnight, starring Don Amici, to bring you an important message from your war department. You wouldn't think of keeping one of the deadly wartime flamethrowers in your home. Yet the liquid fire has been converted by army technicians for use in every household. From the fuel in these machines, a soap has been developed. A soap so mild it can be used in hospitals, kitchens, and even as a shampoo. This is but one example of how army scientists are converting wartime developments to peacetime civilian use. Each month, there are 40,000 good job openings in the work of the army to qualified young men. The pay of a private has been computed as equivalent to an income in civilian industry of approximately $50 a week. Not bad for starting salary, is it? In addition to base pay, the soldier receives 20% more for overseas service, and every three years his income is increased by 5%. Ask at your local Army recruiting station today about a good job with good pay. Act two of A Voyage at Midnight, starring Don Amici as Slim Donovan, operator of the charter boat Sea Wench off the Venezuelan seaport of Bota. Slim and Whitey, his hand on the Sea Wench, walk down the slip toward their shack, above where the boat is moored to meet Modelo. It is barely midnight, and the sounds in the busy little harbor are weird as they reach the shack. Well, I thought Modelo would be here. He seems so anxious. Maybe he changed his mind. Maybe. Turn on the light, Whitey, will you? Never mind the light. Modelo. Yes, Modelo. Get a gun here. I don't want to hurt you. Well, you're crazy, Modelo. You would think I am if you make a move. Oh, you're the boss, Modelo. That's better. You really didn't think I'd actually pay you $15,000 for that hull, did you, Slim? Come to think of it, Modelo, I didn't. Not a man as desperate as you. You think so? Maybe you're right. I hear they found a transmitter back in the hills today. The one which has been sending out information about shipping in this area. You don't say. Yeah. And this is a time in history when they'll pay a lot to know the whereabouts of certain shipping. You're a very smart guy, Slim. I'm a lot smarter than you think. They got the airport covered, haven't they? Got everything else watched. But you can get out this way, can't you, Modelo? In your boat, I think so. Uh huh. Now, if you'll be so kind, you and your friend Whitey there, I want you to check me out on your boat. You really want to be sure, don't you, Modelo? That's right. Turn around. Let's go check to the boat. And no funny business. Get back into the shack. All right. You satisfied, Modelo? Yes. 
It was very thoughtful of you to have a full tank of gas for me. Oh, I always think of those little things for my customers. Now, if you'll be kind enough to tie your friend Whitey there to the chair. Huh? Must I? If you please. Oh, you. Okay, come on, Whitey. There. There. That's it. And now, if you'll turn your back to me, please. Okay. <clears throat> Not so tight, will you? Uh, Don't stay. worry. I didn't know you were that handy with a line, Modelo. Oh, didn't I tell you? I was once the captain of the Commodore's fleet. That's very interesting. <laughs> yes, isn't it? You'll pardon me for doing this to your telephone slip. I don't want you to make any calls. Well, my friends, this is goodbye. You'll never make it, Modelo. We'll see about that. Goodbye, Slim. I've always respected you. That's why I'm leaving you, at least in good health. Slim, quick. See if you can't move over here. Take it easy, Whitey. But he's getting away. Sure, he's getting away. But he won't get far. Ah, there he goes. Can he operate the boat? Yeah, I guess so. Well, come on, slide over this way and I'll try to untie you. Relax. He won't get far. No? No. As a matter of fact, it was a break that he commandeered my boat. Why? Remember I was up to the Harbor Commission this afternoon? Yeah. They ordered my boat beached for 30 days for speeding in the harbor. Listen. You hear? That's the harbor police now. Modelo will never get past the light. This is C.P. McGregor speaking. I hope you've enjoyed our Proudly We Hail story starring Don Amici. Before leaving you, Wendell Niles has an important message from your war department. Loafing along at 550 miles per hour. That's how the pilot of the Army XS-1 jet-propelled plane described a recent test flight. Personally, I'd say that's pretty fast. In future tests, the Army expects to fly at supersonic speeds. They've already flown up to 619 miles per hour. This is but one phase of the new regular Army program of experimentation and research. In electronics, Army technicians have produced a machine that makes lightning-fast algebraic calculations that ordinarily would require thousands of man-hours. A wireless telephone, known as the optophone, which transmits on a beam of light, is another Army contribution to science and better living. Skilled technicians are carrying on the work of the new regular Army. Each month, 40,000 good jobs are open to qualified young men. An Army career is high paying. The private, just starting his training, receives $75 a month cash. In addition, he receives free food, clothing, lodging, medical and dental care. For overseas service, he is paid 20% more. Every three years, he gets an automatic 5% raise. After only 20 and up to 30 years service, he may retire on a high monthly income ranging from half to three quarters pay. And don't forget, he's still entitled to higher education at government expense upon discharge. Any man who enlists now and serves 90 days one of which is previous to the official termination of the war, is eligible for at least 12 months free schooling under the GI Bill of Rights. 40,000 careers a month are open to mentally and physically qualified young men. Find out if you're eligible. Ask at your local Army recruiting station today. We wish to thank Don Amici for his wonderful performance here in our theater. Proudly We Hail will come to you again over this station next week. Listen in.